Hello, and thank you for the introduction. So I'm giving this talk today on behalf of Hossein Yalame, who unfortunately couldn't make it due to visa issues. And this is joint work of the two of us together with Robin Hund, Thomas Schneider, and Aschi Zurich Orla Technical University of Darmstadt. So in this work, we consider secure two-party computation. Here, a short motivating example. Consider a system where on the one side we have a patient, on the other side we have some medical service provider, and we want to run some interaction where the patient inputs some symptoms. The medical service provider has a machine learning model taking those symptoms as input and then can return a diagnosis to the patient. Here we want that the patient's symptoms are, keep, are kept private, but at the same time the service provider wants to keep their model private because this essentially is a business model. And to achieve that, we can employ secure two-party computation, which in general computes a function in such a way that only the outputs are revealed and is usually represented by some circuit in the binary or arithmetic domain. In this work here, we consider the semi-honest security model, meaning that both parties follow the computation steps as they should, but from the data they see, try to find out as much as possible. And we also here consider the Boolean world. So our main contributions are, first of all, a novel method and protocol for uh, the secure evaluation of lookup tables, which is a drop-in addition to um, the state-of-the-art 2PC protocol ABY2 in the setting. Also, our protocol provides the best of two worlds. First of all, it tests the fastest LUT online phase, meaning once the inputs are given, the computation after that. But the setup phase running before that still remains efficient in our case. And we provide open source implementation of not only our protocol, but also the underlying ABY2, as well as silent OT. So where do we exactly want to use lookup tables? If we look at one example, here we have um, a larger circuit only consisting of AND gates and XOR gates in this case, and this is a simple 4-bit addition. And we have here some problems that, for example, a signal has to travel quite some way from the right to the left side. In a 2PC context, this would mean that along the path there are four AND gates, so we need four rounds, and we want to somehow decrease this. If we have access to some lookup tables, those are some gates which take more than two inputs and also make, have more than uh, a single output and encode some arbitrary function. And then we can just identify some chunks of the circuit and replace them by those lookup tables. So we have a much more compact circuit where only the signal has to travel along two of those lookup table gates. So lookup table, uh, look tables can basically be used in two ways. The first is to manually utilize them when designing your protocol or your circuit, as for example done in the works of SecFloat and Siren. And the other work, as for example already shown in the previous slide, is to take some existing circuit and then automatically replace chunks of those circuit by lookup tables to improve the performance in the online phase. So let me give you a short overview over the landscape of existing 2PC lookup table protocols and our work here. On the one scale, we have the online communication where our goal is to keep this really low. On the other side, we have setup communication also leading to a much higher total communication, which is the other dimension we want to consider here. So one of the first results is uh, one-time tooth tables that have a really low online communication, but at the cost of drastic total communication, rendering it infeasible in many scenarios. Desuki et al. in 2017 improved the setup phase and uh, introduced their protocol OP LUT, which still has high but no feasible total communication and really low online communication. But they also have another protocol, SP LUT, which again sacrifices some of the online um, efficiency to get much better total communication. So they have kind of a trade-off where you can have, uh, have the freedom of choice what you exactly need. So what we were able to observe here is that while they use their time state of the art oblivious transfer, if we plug in silent OT now, the cost of those protocols is changing. Most interestingly, it drastically changed for one-time truth, truth tables, which now render OP load obsolete again. But we still have this case where we have now OTTT with higher total communication and really good online phase, and on the other side of the spectrum, SP load with a higher online communication but good total communication. And what our protocol fluid does is 
combine the best of two worlds here by having the same or in many cases even slightly lower online communication as OTTT while at the same time having total communication which is comparable to that of SPLUT. So how does this actually work? Well, our approach works as follows. If we look at um, some lookup table that we want to evaluate, we first have a look at all rows of this lookup table where it actually evaluates to one. Now we built a Boolean formula out of this, representing this lookup table, and this is quite simple in this case, it's a disjunctive normal form where we just have uh, multiple clauses, each clause evaluates to one exactly if the input assignment is given of one of the rows where the output is one. This is also known as sum of products, but to really represent it as sum of products in a useful way, we'd still have to do an intermediate step, which is replacing all ors by xors, which in our case is possible, because each clause here is for one exact input assignment, so it's never the case that two clauses evaluate to two at the same time. And so now with the xors, it's exactly the sum of products if we view it in the binary field F2. Now if we look at this, there's something else which is some kind of a sum of products or a sum of products over two terms, which exactly is a dot product. And now we have products over multiple terms, so we kind of reimagine this lookup table as a generalized dot product. How does this help? Well, if we want to compute such a thing and just start at a simple end gate, we look what the 2PC um, protocol ABY2 already provides us, and first of all, it has a nice protocol for normal dot products, which has a nice property that the online phase is really efficient and independent of the, uh, of the actual dimension of the vectors. But they also have an end gate taking more than two inputs, where again the online phase remains independent of the exact number of input wires. So on the one side, we have a sum over products of two terms. On the other side, we have products over more than two terms. And combining both then leads us to our generalized dot product. So how does this actually perform? Well, if we look at some generic lookup table, which has delta many inputs, sigma many outputs, the protocols uh, compare is given in this table here. So here we look at OTTT, OPLOT, SPLOT, and FLUT, all when using silent OT. And first of all, a single lookup table always takes a single round to evaluate. Also, we see that OTTT and OPLOT have online communication, which is two times the number of inputs as bits only. And Flute has two times the number of outputs. As we will see later, in many cases, the number of outputs is a bit lower than the number of inputs, rendering Flute even a bit better. On the other side, we have SPLOT, which has significantly higher cost in the online phase. If we look at setup, we see that OTTT and OPLOT are quite worse than Flute. Um, also, as already mentioned, OTTT is now outperforming OPLOT. And we see that SPLOT now with silent OT has really, really small cost and setup, but if we want to look at the total communication, we have this two to the delta dominating term in both uh, places, and then it depends on the exact configuration of your size. And if we run a small comparison here, in this table there are different sizes of the number of inputs and number of outputs, highlighted in green each case where Flute is able to outperform as PLOT. And what we can see is that in many cases we are better or comparable, and the only cases where we are really much worse is if we have a lot of input wires and a really low number of output wires. But as already mentioned, at the same time in online, we will always um, significantly outperform as PLOT. So how does this actually perform in realistic circuits? We run some benchmarks, for example, on circuits for floating point operations. And if we look at this and look at the online, for, uh, online phase, first we can see that we are able to perf outperform SPLUT by a factor of 100 in communication. But we are also able to outperform OTTT by a factor ranging somewhere between three and four. So this really shows that here the number of output wires is usually much um, much smaller than the number of input wires. Um, if we look at the total communication, we see that now we are able to outperform OTTT by a factor of about 20. At the same time, often we are a bit worse than SPLUT, up to 20%, but also in one case, 5% uh, better. So it's somehow comparable still while having the much better online phase. Here we also compare to garbled circuits as this provides a constant round online uh, phase and we are better on total communication by a factor of two. But so that you don't wonder, we um, excluded garbled circuits from the online phase because we don't consider the input and output phases here. Um, so we also 
wanted to um, look how the runtime here actually is, we implemented our protocol in Rust alongside um, ABY2 and SilentOT, source code you can find here with this QR code. And the benchmarks actually revealed the following. First of all, if we benchmark it in a LAN setting, um, the filled part of the bar is the online phase and the entire bar is the total, um, com uh, the total computation. And we see that in the online phase, we outperform um, the baseline ABY2, which actually doesn't use any lookup tables by a factor ranging from 1.3 to 2.3. But at the same time, we sacrifice some of the total performance, which is here worse by 10% up to 50%. But this is actually exactly what we want to achieve with uh, lookup tables to improve the online phase and at the same time maybe sacrifice a bit of the setup phase. Interestingly, if we switch over to the right area network setting, we get in a setting where we are even able to outperform ABY2, so the baseline without lookup tables in the total runtime, because now we outperform the online runtime by a factor ranging from 3.4 to 3.8, but the total still by 1.8 to 3.2, because now the increased latency really has a larger effect and our decreased round complexity pays off. So I thank you for your attention. I'm open to answer your questions here and also here are the references to our open source code, our paper and our website. So also feel free to contact us there. Is there any hope to amortize setup costs across multiple instantiations of the same lookup table? Um, you can not if it's um, if you use the same lookup table function, but at multiple places, not really, because what we are using here is kind of a function-dependent preprocessing, yeah. where each time different masks are being used, and then you have to make it based on this. But the thing is, for all input wires, you need products of their masks. And if, for example, you have one lookup table with input wires A, B, C, and the other one with B, C, and D, both can use the same product of B and C. So it's possible to do a bit amortization between multiple lookup tables that share some of the input wires. Interesting. Hi, great talk. I have a question on the programmability of these lookup tables. So is it the users that's defining the function within the lookup table, or is it by looking at a series of AND gates, we're able to compose a lookup table from that. Yeah, that's a good question. It mainly um, depends. So you are free to program whatever you want, and it really depends on the application. So you can look at a circuit, say that you want to replace a specific part, and then just compute compute the function from that, but also if you're just developing a protocol or some specific circuit, it may already be apparent that at some place a lookup table is a wise decision, so you're basically really free to do um, whatever you want there, and on both, in both directions there have been some works. Very cool. Thank you. Thanks for the talk. In the last page, you compare with ABY2 on division and cosine. So how do ABY2 implement those algorithms? such as division and cosine? Um, so the circuits, so it depends pretty much on the circuits that have been benchmarked by them. Um, the protocol ABY2 itself just evaluates it using the standard, um, here in the Boolean uh, domain, XOR gates and AND gates. So they just use the simple binary gates in this case. Yes, I mean, uh, is it a fixed point circuit or floating point circuit? Uh, it's, it's a floating point. It's uh, adhering to the um, floating point standards for 32-bit precision here. Oh, thank you. Hi. Very nice talk. Um, I was wondering if you have tried to compare it with TFHE, like the homomorphic encryption also have this uh, uh, lookup table evaluation. One of them I know is TFHE. Since I saw you compared it with the Garber circuit, uh, and I think the communication will be very small on that, but I, won't, I was wondering if you try comparing it. Um, that's a great question. We actually didn't compare this in this case because we uh, stick more to the MPC side of that all. And I mean, this is also a bit of a different direction because if you are based on secret, share, uh, secret sharing based protocols basically, then you just want to decrease the round complexity, which isn't constant. So. For completeness, we um, also considered uh, garbled circuits here, but yeah, it would also be a different question than how it performs actually for um, HE-based approaches. Thank you. Yeah. 
Great talk. Uh, from this talk, I got a feeling that you are focusing aggressively on just communication, which is why you chose silent OT. But there's, if you also factor in runtime, which is shown on this last slide, then there's this, these other approaches with WS transfers which are PCG based, but they don't aggressively uh, optimize for communication. For example, like Ferret and uh, there's a Shopman uh, at all's work uh, from a few years ago. They uh, are much better uh, in terms of like runtime that you can achieve, and they just compromise a little bit on communication. Uh, so I was wondering if that was uh, something that you uh, compared against, and what were your uh, results from that? Um, so we weren't able to compare with all different approaches because um, the difficulties of uh, including them in our specific implementation, but we actually also have some implementation using uh, Silver OT and compared it, but uh, the results were kind of comparable to those we had here with Silent OT. Thanks. Let's thank Andreas again.